Hi there, my name is Phil DeLuna and I'm running to be a member of Parliament in Toronto St. Paul's for the next federal election. Today we're talking about canvassing, or going door to door. It's a wonderful way to see a slice of Canada that many people don't get to see, speak to new people, your neighbours, and hear about the issues that matter most to them. Hey, so today I am doing a little bit of canvassing, visiting Kitchener Center and my good friend Mike Morris to get a little bit of training and to see what it's like to go door to door with an experienced candidate who has done an amazing job or did an amazing job in the last election. Um, Mike is right here with me. Welcome to my apartment and slash campaign office for now. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks so much, Phil, for being here. Awesome. Can you walk us through all everything you have here in terms of planning and preparation? Yeah, we've got uh, some walk sheets here. And so this is uh, some of the folks we'll be heading to, to to knock on doors this afternoon. We've got uh, some postcards we'll, we'll be leaving at their doors. Uh, we'll be throwing some... Uh, some pens and that in, into a bag, and uh, I got some sunscreen on, I hope, some masks, uh, and then bike on over. Amazing. And Mike, so can you just tell me a little bit about what's the best thing you love about canvassing, and what's yeah. the worst thing about <laughs> canvassing? <laughs> the best part is just like having good conversations with folks, uh, and, and you know, um, yeah, just showing up to listen. I find it so energizing, particularly someone I've never met before that that person might be willing to just share, you know, the things that are important to them, uh, you know, getting into meaningful conversation with someone I've never been met before can be pretty special. Um, some of the challenging stuff, well, like earlier this week, it's just started pouring rain. <laughs> so then like at one point, I think my pen wasn't even able to write, sorry, I missed you on some of the postcards. It was raining so much. Uh, you know, a bunch of folks weren't home in a row. It's always nice when people are actually home and there to, to chat. There's always those moments of, you know, breathing deeply and then moving on to the next. And then, you know what, that day I then got to a door and someone, you know, was super kind. We had a nice conversation and that gave me the energy to keep on going to the next to the next door. Awesome. Yeah. Great. I'm really excited to get out there and start canvassing for Mike. He's going to be an amazing MP. Uh, plus, I get to learn from the best in the business. Right, Mike? <laughs> That's kind of you, Phil. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you out on, on the road. So I'm currently out in the neighborhood canvassing, armed with my trusty clipboard here. It's a walk list of all of the electors in the riding. And right behind me over there is Mike Morris talking to, talking to a potential uh, voter, potential elector. Um, it, as you can see, it's, it's raining right now. Uh, and, and we're just going around trying to talk to people. Uh, the script is really simple. Hi, how's it going? My name is Phil. Uh, we are running for, or I'm volunteering for Mike Morris's campaign. Mike Morris ran to be member of parliament last, last election and came second place. We're here to hear about what matters most to you in the upcoming federal election. Um, it's as simple as that. And you'd be surprised how many people are interested in engaging and talking. Gotta get used to doing this, future MP. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Thanks good so to much. have you here. Thanks, Such a Mike. pleasure. So I just finished doing a round of homes with Mike Morris here in Kitchener. Over three hours, we probably did 20 or so homes. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Um, most of the people weren't home and it's a rainy day, so I'm assuming some folks don't want to come to the door. But we learned a lot about how to canvas, how to approach people, how to talk to people, have good conversations. Canvassing with Mike Morris was an incredible experience and I learned so much from it. I know oftentimes people can feel a little bit shy or uncomfortable going door to door and talking to strangers. But I actually found that a vast majority of people who were home had a few minutes to chat and talk and each of these conversations led to some sort of a breakthrough. The number one thing, in my view, that you should be doing when you go door to door is to try to connect to someone. People remember conversations. They don't always see ads, especially if they're digital, and a lot of people don't spend that much time on social media as one might think. So the best way that you can really try to connect with people is door to door talking to them. Learning from Mike and doing it myself, I've come up with a script of how I interact and I head to the door. First thing that I do is say, hi, my name is Phil DeLuna and I'm running to be a member of parliament in this riding. I'm going around to introduce myself to my neighbors and to get an understanding of the issues that matter most to you in this upcoming federal election. Some of the larger mainstream parties, their script is simple. 
Hi, I'm with this party. Can we count on your vote? Often, and the traditional line of thinking with canvassing is you want to identify your supporters so that the closer that you get to election day, you can activate your supporters to go out to the vote. This period, about the week of the right before the election day, is called the GOTV period or get out the vote, where the focus of the campaign shifts entirely to getting out the voters that you've identified to the polls and voting. Now, this makes a lot of sense if you're a large, established, one of the mainstream parties and you've already had a presence in the riding. But for me, what I want to emphasize and what I care about most going door to door is introducing them to me as a candidate and to the Green Party and the Green Party values. Traditionally, when you go canvassing, you're going to use something called a walk sheet. A walk sheet is a list of all of the different addresses and the electors, which you typically get from the party, who in turn gets them from Elections Canada. Elections Canada has a list, a, a registered database, of all of the registered voter, voters and all of their addresses in Canada. At the start of an election, Elections Canada will give this data to a party or to a candidate so that they can go door to door, know who they're talking to, and do things like canvassing and data collection. When I was canvassing with Mike Morris, it was very simple. We use a pen and a paper. We would go to the door. We would check off whether they were a strong, weak supporter, neutral, weak opposition, or strong opposition. Of course, this is a little bit old school and can be a little bit clunky as well. So our team developed a, a mobile app. Our mobile app is simply on the phone. This allows us to scroll through, pick the support level that we want, and hit save. That way, everything gets automatically updated online. There are other tools like eCanvasser, which are ready-made apps th that allow people to track voter uh, intent. And there's some great resources by Democracy Kit, which explains how to use eCanvasser uh, for a municipal campaign, for example. Rather than paying eCanvasser, which can be pretty expensive per user, we wanted to just build something from scratch. So we used Airtable and mini extensions, two software as a service tools, and our, our web page. So people can just go online, go to the web browser, uh, and be able to start using and logging data right away. Well, I personally find this a lot easier to do than having to use pen and paper, and that way you don't have to worry about carrying too much stuff around. When you go to the door, it's important to remember to not come empty handed. A lot of people will typically spend a couple of seconds talking to you, but then may be interested to learn more. So we've purchased door hangers and postcards. These are the two things, the two pieces of literature that we've prioritized in our campaign. The content for our postcards is relatively simple. We have the name, we have a QR code for the website, as well as the address. We have a, an email address and contact information on the front. On the back, we have a little bit about me and my bio some of my endorsements at the bottom, and the three things that I am campaigning for, which are green jobs that leave no one behind, housing that all can afford, and a just and sustainable society. As a candidate, you need to be good at talking to people and being able to shift your conversation depending on the flow or how you feel the conversation is going. So I'll describe what a typical interaction at the door is like. I'll say, hi, my name is Phil, I'm running a BMP, and I wanna know about the issues that matter most to you. A few things will happen. One, they'll be busy and polite and say, I'm working right now, I don't have much time to chat. At which point you say, that's totally fine, I understand. Would I be able to leave this postcard or door hanger with you so you can learn more about me? Most of the time they say yes, and if they don't, that's okay, you move on. The second thing that they'll do is they'll say, well, you know what, that's a great question, here's what I'm concerned about. And then they'll go into a lot of different issues. The things that I've been hearing at the door are climate change, COVID response and the economy. Depending where you are and what your riding looks like, a lot of people will also have local issues which may not be in the jurisdiction of the federal government. Maybe it'll be something to do with a, a traffic or crime or garbage collection or a tree being fallen down. These sorts of things can be either under municipal or provincial jurisdiction. And it's totally fine to say, I'm running for federal government, but I would be happy to get you in touch with the right people to help solve that problem. Uh, often, people just want to have the sense that they're being heard and that the issues that they care about are resonating. Always say, thank you for your time. I'm so happy that you told me about this and I will make sure that I think about it as I continue in this campaign and advocate for it during the election period. The most common response that you'll get when you ask, what are the issues that matter most to you? Is silence. They'll go, oh, I haven't really thought about that. I'm just kind of 
focused on the pandemic, focused on my job, focused on my kids, focused on all this. This is an opportunity for you to say, okay, well, these are the things that I'm campaigning for and let me know if they resonate with you. Green jobs, housing affordability, essential workers. What are your thoughts on that? The goal always is to have a good conversation. And if you have that good conversation, eventually you can start with some more probing questions. I always like to ask, have you ever voted green before? Would you ever consider doing it? Some will say no, some will say yes. And a lot of times, if people say no, you can say, why? Why is that? What is it about the Green Party that doesn't appeal to you? And that's really valuable information too. Over this past year, we've all kind of been stuck in our bubbles home alone. And because of that, we haven't had the opportunity to talk to strangers, talk to our neighbors, talk to new people. Also, our online lives with social media really are full of echo chambers. We go to the places where there are people similar to us, similar interests, similar political views, etc. What we need to do more, in my view, to combat polarization and to have a greater dialogue is to talk to people who don't necessarily identify the same way you do. What better way than to get out onto the street and knock on people's doors and just have conversations? To me, that's one of the most fun parts of running for office, is just talking to people and getting to see a slice of Canada that very few people get to see. As a candidate, you have to realize that you're never gonna get to every single home by yourself. You really need a team. And there are different strategies on how best and efficiently you can canvas. A lot of people like to do the two by two method, where you have two teams of canvassers, two each in a pair. Each of them walk down the same street, one on the left, one on the right, and the candidate kind of walks in between them. Anytime there is a door knock and someone comes to the door, then that's an opportunity for the candidate to have a conversation and they ensure that most of the time of the candidate is spent talking to people rather than going to empty doors where no one's home and leaving some flyers. A few things to remember about canvassing that you should keep in mind. Safety is always the priority. No one should be canvassing alone. Not only is it a little bit lonely and boring and unsafe, but it's just not as fun. Part of the appeal of canvassing is the social aspect of it. Our riding is split up into a number of polls, and each poll typically takes about a sh two shifts to complete, with each shift being two hours each. So you can do the math depending on how big your riding is or how many number of polls you have, and of course, our poll and our riding is a little bit smaller and more condensed because it's an urban riding. So a riding in Toronto and the geography of that riding will look very different than a riding in rural Nova Scotia, for example. So finally, make sure that you stay hydrated. Make sure that you go to the door with a smile on your face. There are going to be days where you're going to be tired. There's going to be days where you don't want to canvas. But every single moment that you're not putting yourself in front of a voter is an opportunity cost. Leading up to the campaign and even during the campaign period, the candidate's number one job is to introduce themselves to as many people as possible. It's going to be awkward at first. You may need to take some time getting used to it, but I promise you it's well worth it. There's nothing like going to a door, having a good conversation where the person was a little bit hesitant at first and towards they said, you know what? I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for talking to me. I will consider voting for you. So I hope you've enjoyed that and a little bit of tips on how to canvas. If you're not sure how to get started or you feel a little bit nervous, it's okay, we all do. But the number one thing you should do is just get out there and get started. Canvas outside, canvas to your next door neighbors. Just talk to people. Trust me, you'll really enjoy it.